Welcome to Love Lines. Francis Bruce. In a table of plenty, God will... A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoar frost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. What we have heard and know, and what our fathers have declared to us, we will declare to the generation to come, the glorious deeds of the Lord and His strength, and the wonders that He wrought. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. He commanded the skies above, and opened the doors of heaven. He rained manna upon them for food, and gave them heavenly bread. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels, who descend them in abundance. And he brought them to his holy land, to the mountains his right hand had won. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds. That is not how we learn Christ, assuming that you have heard of Him and were taught in Him as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, Created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. So they said to him, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, 
What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon. Last week, I was sharing about hunger, about how the different readings point to hunger, and how I basically pointed out that we did not understand our hunger, especially did not understand that the one food that would truly satisfy the deepest hunger and emptiness that we feel is none other than our Lord Jesus Christ himself. Well, today is the culmination of the readings that we had last week. And the culmination today is because we've seen the first reading, God sending down bread from heaven. And in the gospel today, Jesus declaring that he is that bread given by God the bread that comes down from heaven. He is the bread of life who will satisfy our deepest longings. And if we look at the gospel today, especially what the Lord tells us towards the end of John, when he says, I am the bread of life, whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. When we hear this word, these words of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is easy to see that he is simply referring to the Eucharist. It is easy to associate the Eucharist with his words that I am the bread of life. And yet it is quite it is quite myopic for us to simply see the Eucharist as the only reference of nourishment uh, in, uh, it, when it comes to our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is food not simply because of the Eucharist, but because of his whole person. With the Eucharist, the biggest symbol of literal food that we take in. And so I'd like to share with you four aspects where the Lord is nourishment for us, real food for us. The first one is His Word. Everything that the Lord says, everything that He tells us, everything that we hear Him say to other people, the attitude behind the things that He says, these things nourish us. These things are food for us. For example, when we hear the Lord tell us, Come to me all you who are weary and find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. These are words that give us great nourishment. It, they give me great nourishment as a priest. For example, when the Lord approaches Peter after his crucifixion, and on this wonderful beach, asks Peter not once, not twice, but three times, Do you love me? These are words of our Lord Jesus Christ that are not just directed to the people that they are directed to in the gospel, but words that are directed also to us. When we look at those first words, come to me all you who labor and find life burdensome, are we not all looking for rest? And therefore for the Lord to tell us that he will give us that rest is great nourishment for us. It is great nourishment for me. In the second example that I gave, when he asks Peter, do you love me? I realize that our deepest longing is to love and to be loved in return. And the fact that God is hungering for my love because he loves me, it doesn't make me hunger for lesser loves, that the love of God is enough to fill me an eternity. And so we see in all of this that the word of the Lord is actually food for our souls. It is real food and drink. The second aspect of our Lord that gives us nourishment besides his words is his life. And we see many examples in his life that inspire us, that give us great um, impetus to go ahead and live life to the fullest. 
We see, for example, our Lord Jesus Christ dining with sinners, deliberately seeking them out, telling them to come down from trees in order to visit them, telling, calling them from their, from their tax collector's tables in order to dine with them. He invites himself into the lives of sinners. He seeks them out and joins them. He also, in his lifetime, associated himself with people who are weak, people who are looked down on by society, people whom I would call the non-entities, such as widows, children, and also the non-Jews. He sought them out, and he was very, they were very, he sought them out, and they were very special to him. And so we see in this first example of Jesus, in his life when he dined with sinners, that Christ is interested in sinners. And because of that, He is interested in you. He is interested in me. And that thought alone is nourishing. To know that I will not be avoided by God simply because I am a sinner. And to know in fact that I am being sought after by none other than God Himself. That is refreshing. That is filling. And that is very nourishing. One of our human hunger is to know and to be known. And for our Lord Jesus Christ to associate with himself with those who have no voice in society, with the non-entities, it removes the fear of insignificance in us who have no name, who have no fame. God sides with the nobodies, and that is real food for us who are little in the eyes of society. And so we have the words of Jesus, and we have the example of his life. We also, for the third aspect, have the example of his death. The first thing that our Lord Jesus Christ did when he was raised after being crucified on the cross was to ask God for pardon for the very people who were crucifying him. He was asking forgiveness for sinners. In fact, he was about to die for sinners, for the very people who were offending him. To see this example of his death is quite life-giving and inspiring for us because it diminishes, at least for me, the fear of death. Because the Lord himself in the moment when he was about, he was being raised in order that he would die on the cross, his first thoughts were for people like me, a sinner. A few days ago, I was talking to one of our priests and I told him that I think it's, it's just enough that I, would, I, I could probably pay for a good and peaceful death, especially since this is the, the year of St. Joseph. And then I also told this priest friend that on one hand, I would love to, to die peacefully in the, in the love of God. But on the other hand, if I die in a way that is not to my liking, for example, I would die with some fear. I would die with some trepidation. I would die with some pain. At least to that extent, because Jesus himself died with so much pain, I would be imitating the death of our Lord Jesus Christ so that even in death, I am imitating Christ. And so the effect of his death on me is to diminish the fear of death. And that for you and for myself is quite nourishing. It is life-giving. And finally, I put these two aspects together. If we have as for nourishment the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, his life and his death, we also have for this last part, and I put them together, the Eucharist and prayer. And I put the Eucharist and prayer together because I, for example, would always try to pray as much as possible in the presence of the Holy Eucharist. But at the same time, whenever I receive the Holy Eucharist in Holy Communion, I always receive it in the disposition of prayer, in a state of prayer, in, all, in order to receive our Lord Jesus Christ properly. And so we see here, in this last aspect where Jesus comes to us as food and real nourishment, the Eucharist and prayer, we see literal food, that the Eucharist, His precious body and blood, is real food 
and literally will drink for us. But in my own experience of the Eucharist and prayer, one of the things that have come to me and hit me quite strongly with regard to my devotion to the Eucharist and prayer is not just the real presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, but the idea of being in friendship with God. To be able to stand in His presence, His real presence. To be able to pray. To be able to receive His body and blood. And doing so, and trying to always be in a state of grace in order to be able to avail of these great graces, brings to me this wonderful realm of being in friendship with God. And this is what I love about the Eucharist and prayer and why they nourish me and why it is real food for why they are real food for me because it they make me friends with God. Brothers and sisters, it is a mistake to think that when the Lord Jesus tells us today in the gospel, I am the bread of life, to simply think of the Eucharist as the only way, the only way that Jesus nourishes us. He nourishes us in all aspects of His person, in all aspects of, of His being. Everything about our Lord Jesus Christ is real food. His words, His life, His death, His precious body and blood. Indeed, His whole person. In order for us to avail of this bread of life that will fill our deepest hunger, we need to avail not just of His body and blood, but engage the whole person of our Lord Jesus Christ. His person, His life, His death, His words, His example, and His precious body and blood. And by doing so, encounter and finally avail for us life everlasting. Amen. Let us stand to profess our faith. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at this spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. The body and blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will not hunger, and whoever believes in me will not thirst. We shall now pray the prayer for priests, on this, on the occasion of the feast of, of, on the occasion of John Mary Vianney Sunday, Lord Jesus, we your people pray to you for our priests. You have given them to us for our needs. We pray for them in their needs. We know that you have made them priests in the likeness of your own priesthood. You have consecrated them, set them aside, anointed them, filled them with the Holy Spirit. Appointed them to teach, to preach, to minister, to console, to forgive, and to feed us with your body and blood. Yet we know too that they are one with us and share our human weaknesses. We know too that they are tempted to sin and discouragement as are we, needing to be ministered to as do we, to be consoled and forgiven as do we. Indeed, we thank you for choosing them from and from among us, so that they understand us as we understand them. Suffer with us and rejoice with us. Worry with us and trust with us. Share our beings, our lives, our faith. We ask that you give them this day the gift you gave your chosen ones on the way to Emmaus, your presence in their hearts, your holiness in their souls, your joy in their spirits, and let them see you face, you face to face in the breaking of the Eucharistic bread. We pray to you, O Lord, through Mary, the mother of all priests, for your peace and for ours. Amen. St. John Mary Vianney, pray for us. We pray. 
company with constant protection, O Lord, those who you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow for the blessing. For each benediction, the response is Amen. May the God of all consolation order your days in His peace and grant you the gifts of His blessing. Amen. Amen. May He free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in His love. Amen. Amen. So that on this life's journey, you may be effective in good works, rich in the gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you and your loved ones, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Our Mass ascended, go in the peace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everyone.